day 30 of 30 of the 30 on 30. Who's the last team we're talking about? Take a wild guess. New York Yankees. Okay. Um, we've done up to this point all 29 teams. Started in the central, uh, started in the west, went to the central. Uh, actually, no, started the central, went to the west. And, uh, and then went over to the east. They're all in the description down below. So whoever your team is, take a look down below and uh, take a look at what I've done. I broke down basically off-season needs for everybody, what I think teams should do, and my predictions, what I think they'll actually do. Um, and after this, I'm going to be doing, I'm right out the gate, I'm going to be doing my five bold three-team trades. Okay, so I'm going to do six, five major trades that will involve three teams instead of two. Um, so to make it up, I'm going to spice it up a little bit. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notification so you don't miss out, particularly if you're new. And let me know if you're doing in the comments down below so I can personally thank you. I really appreciate your support. And whether you're new or been with me since the beginning, I appreciate all of these. So my goal is to make this the best baseball channel out there. And uh, I appreciate you coming along this ride with me. So with that, let's get to the New York Yankees. <clears throat> you know, they're obviously a competitive team every year. And... They're blessed with being in the big market and having finances, but they don't have unlimited. I mean, they kind of do have unlimited finances, but you know they also have to pay ridiculous luxury taxes, and when they get over the get over the threshold and stuff like that, so it does come back to bite them. I know it reset the year before they brought in Kara Cole, which put him back over. But they're trying to get under the two hundred ten million dollar threshold this year. We'll see if they do. I mean, they they bought they took about almost ninety million off the payroll, but. You know, with arbitration raises and stuff like that, people coming back, they're adding about half of it right back. And uh, depending on what they do, you know, re-signing DJ LeMay, who obviously is going to eat into half of that, is probably going to cost $20 million a year, which doesn't leave him a ton of money to make moves. So I think they're going to have to be a little creative, um, you know, capitalize on, um, you know, guys that might become available that we didn't think were going to become available at a more, you know, potentially or hopefully a more reasonable price. And, um... If, if I were Brian Cashman, I would, you know, be patient but strike fast to when an opportunity arises. Um, and here's some, uh, you know, opportunities or uh, needs that I see. Obviously, starting pitching is, you know, that and re-signing DJ LeMahieu to me are the two most um, urgent priorities for the Yankees. Um, you know, a, a, another player, one of the Yankees' problems is that it, is they have a, you know, when they're healthy, they have a really strong starting team, starting lineup, starting outfield and infield. But when they get, if somebody gets hurt or needs a day off or whatnot, their depth behind them, um, you know, has been unreliable. You know, I like a lot of the guys, but they've been unreliable. And there are some guys this offseason that can play multiple positions that I think would be an upgrade over what they currently have. Even though I like Tyler Wade and, and you know, and some of these other folks, you know, there are some other guys out there that give them versatility. I like Mike Taubman. You know, I like uh, Mike Ford and those guys, but there are some guys that, that do represent an upgrade that I think the Yankees should be uh, seriously considering. Um, you know, and they obviously have to address the catching position as well. Um, you know, that those are the main needs, and as well as in, in, in improving, um, you know, base running and making the team a little bit more athletic, and maybe bringing in a lefty hitter, um, you know, to balance that lineup a little bit, a lefty contact hitter. Um, which I think will be important. So, you know, starting pitching, obviously, they have to bring in a number two or one B behind Garrett Cole. You know, Trevor Bauer is the sexy choice. Uh, I don't see him coming to the Yankees only because of his price. But with that said, me personally, I think uh, two guys out there um, they should consider for a trade. Number one is Joe Musgrove of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the other one's Marco Gonzalez of the Seattle Mariners. Both of them have years of team control at affordable contracts. And they can slide right in and be a number two, give them innings when they need it, and uh, you know would cost more in prospect capital than they would payroll space. So you know, um, and you can get both. I mean, obviously for the cost, you can get both of them for less than it would cost to bring in Trevor Bauer. So just a thought, but I think one of those guys should be considered, or two, if they have the prospect capital to do it. Um, I think an, I think another innings eater should be brought in too, and Julio Teheran to me is a, is a good candidate for that. If you look at his stats aside from last year, which is an anomaly for everybody, he's pitched between 175 and 220 innings for eight years straight. Okay, that's a reliable innings eater. We need a guy like that. And I I know I talked about it in my ideal Yankees off season, and it's that's videos in the description down below as well as well as a, so, uh, my MLB free agent predictions and compact 
uh, contract predictions, but he is part of. Um, I think he he should seriously be brought in. I mean, he's not very old. He's maybe 29, 30 at tops. Um, but you get him on a one year deal or a two year deal, and you can go in and rely on him every fifth day to go out and throw six innings, which gives him 180. You know, they'll take a load off the bullpen. And even though they've had an elite bullpen, um, it wasn't so elite this year. But even if even if it, you know. Even in elite bullpens get tired and fatigued if the starters aren't aren't going long enough, okay? So we can't rely on that, okay? And even though bringing in bullpen a couple of relievers or a strong reliever is 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 important as well, we have to have you know we have to be able to uh, have starters that can go the distance. A long reliever would be good, and reliable relievers as well. So Julio Teheran and the Marco Gonzalez or Julio Teheran and a Joe Musgrove would be an ideal offseason plus. That means they would have the flexibility to not have to rush Luis Severino back, even though he's coming back in the summer. That doesn't mean he's going to be full strength. I don't think he'll be full strength until 2022, to be honest. That's my opinion. But bringing in two guys, at least, would give them you know, depth and protection. Uh, because, and especially if they don't use Davey Garcia in the trade um, or, Jordan, or, or uh, Clark Schmidt in the trade, they can ease those guys in, too as well as Jordan Montgomery, who will be another year out from Tommy John. So they have plays, even though Paxton and Hap are gone and, and Tanaka's gone. And very, un, it's very unlikely that more than one of those guys are going to come back. And if they do bring somebody back, it'll probably be Tanaka, but there's no guarantee. Personally, I would go for this route and try to bring in two innings-eating pitchers. Even though Tanaka's great, he hasn't shown the ability to get past the fifth inning in quite a while. So uh, I think it's important to... Bringing some guys that can give us more, you know, more uh, innings and take the load off the bullpen. So that's my starting pitching. You know, I, I, I thought Robbie Ray was a good fit, but he re-signed uh, with the Toronto Blue Jays. I thought Charlie Morton was a good fit. He signed with the Atlanta Braves this past week. So those guys are non-options. So who with the hair on and want a trade for those two guys would be ideal. Bullpen. I think Liam Hendricks is a perfect fit, and I also think Brad Hand is a perfect fit. I think bringing in another power righty arm. Uh, particularly if they happen to use Adam Adovino in a trade for something or somebody, um, it's a possibility. You know, he's kind of fallen out of uh, the circle of trust this past year. He had a, a pretty off year, even though he was dominant the year before. So he, should, he still has talent and the ability to do that. But I think if they were able to move his contract or even part of it, Liam Hendricks would be a perfect fit to bring in. He's a power righty, and he could complement Chapman, who has shown you know he's been dominant. I mean, his stats 2.8 ERA over the past four years with the Yankees, but he's also shown propensity to throw the wrong pitch at the wrong time. So another power arm like Hendricks would be perfect, and Brad Hand would be a perfect lefty, uh, another power arm in a lefty. It'd be him, Britton, and Chapman. So those two guys would really, really give that bullpen some punch, especially with Tommy Conley out from Tommy John surgery and likely not coming back because he opted for free agency. Um, those two guys would really, really, really propel that bullpen. Um Infield, obviously, DJ LeMahieu prior to number one. But I think they should bring in someone else, like I said, who can play multiple positions that can protect all the infielders. And, uh, and I think Tommy Lestella is that guy. He's a good fit for a lot of teams, just like Jurickson Profar is a good fit for a lot of teams. Tommy Lestella, to me, he's a lefty bat, and he's a good complement to the lineup, good contact hitter. He can play multiple positions, and he gives the lineup and the team more versatility. And at, that, at this point, the team needs versatility. We're, we've been overly reliant on the home run at the expense of a lot of strikeouts. We need more contact hitters. In a perfect world, they'd be trading for uh, uh, Francisco Lindor. But I don't really know. I, can't, I, I have a hard time seeing. I'm less confident. I'll put it this way. I'm less confident now than I was before, a couple weeks ago, that they're going to acquire uh, Francisco Lindor. I'm a, I, I, as much as I love Luke Voigt, I think he should be the headliner of the trade, for a trade for Lindor. But... Um, We'll see what prevailing minds do and think. So he's obviously Solastella and bringing back DJ LeMahieu. Ideal, ideal, ideal. If there's a possibility to move Glaber back to second, um, is if they trade Voight, then you can move Glaber back to second. And if they trade Voight for pitching, one of these starters, let's say, then you can bring in somebody like an Andrelton Simmons for a year and then wait for that star-studded free agent shortstop class next year and sign one of them out of free agency without having, having to give up a boatload of your prospects. That's an option too. So I think that it's, it's really up to uh, the team to decide what they want to do with Luke Voigt as, as, you know, whether they want to keep him. Yes, home major league home run hitter, stuff like that, but he also fits that high strikeout <clears throat> kind of somewhat one-dimensional person 
like that, like Giancarlo Stanton and a little bit of Judge, but uh, Judge will be a little bit less. But we need more contact. So somebody like Lindor, somebody like Tommy Listella, again, contact hitters. They're also athletic, okay? Help us on the base paths. And we need to steal more bases. We need to manufacture more small ball runs like the Tampa Bay Rays have done, okay? Cause havoc on the base paths. Drive guys in, drive guys over, stuff like that. Um, and catching is the other situation. I think James McCann will be a good fit. Um, I, I don't think JT Real Muto, he's on the wrong side of 30. He's already 30, so he's on the wrong side of it. He's going to cost a boatload of money, probably $100 million. I don't think it's worth it, in my opinion. He's obviously one of the top catchers in the game, but at this point, I, I think James McCann will be a better fit. He wouldn't even cost half the price, and you know, he would be a good game caller, give us some, give us some offense, and uh, we're just looking for consistency behind the plate. Okay, and Gary Sanchez, while world out of worldly potential, he's been wildly inconsistent. And you know, I would bring in somebody like McCann to platoon with a Kyle Higashioka, and maybe package Gary Sanchez in a trade for a, a starting pitcher, you can, you know, or something, uh, a reliever. So just a thought, but um, I think he'd be a good candidate for a change of scenery. And he's only he's still young, so he's got a power bat. You know, I, I don't want to crucify him, but I think it's time for a change of scenery for Gary Sanchez. So that's what I think they should do. Is what I think they will actually do. Okay, um, I think they're going to wind up trading for a starter, and uh, I, you know, <clears throat> I, and I don't see them. This is where I've been struggling lately too. I see them trading for a starter, and I don't think it's going to be Musgrove or Marco Gonzalez for some reason. I think it's going to be somebody else. Don't know who, but and I think they might bring in somebody low key, uh, whether it be a Taiwan Walker or a Rich Hill or something like that. I don't see them making any flashy moves on the starting pitching front, unfortunately. Um, I want to be wrong. Believe me, I do. Uh, we need to have championship teams. Don't just, don't just have like one ace and a bunch of threes and fours. We need a legitimate number two or one B to back, to be you know to be right behind Garrett Cole. Can't just be him and then other guys. It has to be, we have to be strong up front. Just look at the last bunch of championship teams. They've had strong starting pitching and strong bullpen. We need to boost both. Period. Okay. Um, I think they'll wind up bringing in Blake, Blake Trini, uh, reliever from the Dodgers, and Brad Hand. Those are my two guys. Instead of instead of Liam Hendricks and Brad Hand, I think they'll bring in Blake Trini and Brad, Brad Hand. I think Trini will cost a little bit less um, than than uh, Hendricks would, and I also see them packaging Adovino in a trade for something or somebody. It could be a utility player. It could be somebody. I don't know. It could be packaging him with Sanchez and sending him somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where, but I see him being moved as well. And the Yankees absorbing probably half his contract, so they'll be saving four or five million bucks that they can use somewhere else. Um, I see them re-signing DJ LeMahieu, uh, probably four years with a fifth-year option. I don't care. He's the team MVP. Put him in there. He's the type of guy that I think he'll great. He'll age gracefully. And again, at some point you can move him to first base. Okay. Um, I think they're going to wind up going with Theo Estrada and Tyler Wade for the backup infielders and stuff like that. Um, I don't see them making an upgrade there, unfortunately. Um, and I actually think for catcher, I think they're going to bring in Yadier Molina. Um, that's my prediction, what the Yankees are going to do. Again, not a sexy offseason. Um, but I hope, again, I hope I'm wrong. I really, really do. It's it's weird because like Cashman is usually wildly patient and, and it's frustrating for the fans. Um, but he winds up making good moves. And he makes, I think, better moves in trades than he does in free agency. Even though he got Garrett Cole and he brought in CC Sabathi and those guys. Um, and Mark Teixeira over the years and stuff like that. He, he's had a lot of success with his trades as well. So I see the biggest moves for the Yankees happening via trade this offseason instead of free agency. I see them obviously re-signing DJ and a couple other people. Um, I don't see them bringing back any of their three pitchers, Tanaka or Hap or Paxton. I just don't see it happening. Uh, but again, I would not be surprised if they brought back Tanaka. But I, I think somebody like a Walker or a... A Julio to Heron would be an upgrade over Masahiro Tanaka at this point. So, um, to me, I go with the upgrade, especially when it's not going to cost a ton more. Um, so, that's my outlook for the Yankees. Um, you know, that's my team. And again, I, I try to keep it real, try to keep it realistic. I'm not going to just say they're going to get real Muto and Bauer and, and George Springer and they're going to win the next three World Series. I, I don't do that because it's just not realistic. It's not true. Um, and if they do get all three, I'd be shocked. <laughs> and, uh, particularly since there's no need for George Springer. But um, that's what I have for the Yankees. So hope you enjoyed this. Hit that thumbs up. 
hit uh, it's really helpful to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and uh, so you don't miss my next one like I said it's gonna be five bold and crazy three team trades okay that uh, should happen or at least some of them should happen so um, thanks for watching be safe look out for each other see you on the other side